Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this video is a response to a question that got asked on video number 57 which was part 3 of the um, Building an AM Radio series and one of, one of my viewers Barry Whitaker, uh, inquired about uh, using the noise source for alignments and I've been using the M0 BMM noise source uh, which you've seen on previous videos I'll put a link somewhere up there to um, to the, the video about that noise source and Barry's question was in relation to my Feelilec signal generator just behind me here um, and he said that's got a random noise can you use that uh, and I thought hmm that's a good question I, I've not actually used the, the noise on the uh, signal generator but maybe I should try so um, that's really what this is about and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to answer essentially two questions first of all um, the question that Barry was asking is it a different noise and uh, a supplementary question after that essentially is can you actually use it um, for radio alignment um, so that's the two questions I'm going to try and answer now the Feelilec um, signal generator manual is, is not bad actually for a, for a Chinese um, instrument however it is a little short on detail in places and it mentions noise but a little bit further on it it, caught, it mentions something else which it calls AWGN now I'm guessing that AWGN is all wave Gaussian noise in other words noise with a Gaussian shaped uh, envelope to it um, I'm not 100% certain about that and the manual is a little sketchy so if you're familiar with that or understand it maybe you can put something in the comments that would be helpful for everybody I guess um, but I thought it's worth looking at both um, those types of noise and seeing how they compare uh, seeing what they look like and also seeing uh, how practical they are to actually use in, in lining the IF on, an array, on a radio so that's what the video is about um, let's start by having a look at the three different signals in the in the voltage and the, the time domain on an oscilloscope okay the yellow trace here on channel one is the m0 bnm noise source and as you can see there's uh, it definitely starts from a, from a base point and uh, it's a fairly random sort of uh, waveform obviously we're viewing this um, in the time domain at the moment we'll have a look in the um, frequency domain in a while now let's uh, pop channel 2 on and this is the uh, random noise from the Feelilec uh, FY6900 and on channel 3 we've got the AWGN uh, noise source also from the Feelilec on now on channel 2 and um, as you can see the two the 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 purple and the blue trace uh, are definitely different now there is no frequency adjustment on the M0 BNM noise source on the yellow trace it's just an analog circuit obviously the signal generator requires you to set up a frequency so what I've done for the purposes of uh, trying to be fair is I've set both channels of the Feelilec to 455 kilohertz and I've picked that frequency because that's a common IF frequency on radio receivers and that is the kind of frequency I would want to actually use the um, wave the noise to um, to align the IF section of the uh, of the radio as you'll see a little bit later on in this video okay so there's there's the three signals as viewed in um, time domain and clearly they're uh, they're all very different um, let's now see how they look in the frequency domain here then is the noise floor and we'll now switch on the M0 BNM noise source there we go and think the thing to note is that uh, we've got 100 megahertz uh, across the screen there and certainly above 10 megahertz the signal has dropped off appreciably almost to nothing but certainly below 10 megs it certainly looks random Okay, here's the Feelilec 6900, and this is the random noise. And as you can see, there is appreciable random noise, fairly linear up to about um, 50 megahertz, and then beyond about 60, 70 megahertz starts to drop off a little bit. The signal generator is only rated to 
um, 50 megahertz so I think that's more than acceptable let's now look at the AWGN noise here then is the noise floor and we're going to switch on the AWGN noise from the Philly Lex signals in right up as you can see very similar to the random noise plot um, reasonably um, steady up until about um, 50 megahertz middle of the trace and beyond that it starts to drop away but as I mentioned just now signal generator is only rated to 50 megahertz anyway so those are the three noise sources viewed in frequency domain now I want to use these noise sources for aligning the IF of some of my radio projects so here's the M0 BNM noise source uh, when I'm using it on the IF frequency and here you've got um, span between about 400 and 500 kilohertz and as you can see in that frequency range it's um, pretty uh, steady linear across that spread let's now look at the Felilec uh, signals okay first up is the uh, random noise function from the FY6900 and I think first thing to note about this wave, about this, well, this is um, frequency domain, is that it certainly has got, uh, shall we say, something that's slightly less than random to its shape. There certainly is some kind of uh, pattern there, odd, odd though it perhaps is. Let's now look at the AWGN noise. Okay, on to the AWGN noise then from the Felilex signal generator. And I think first thing to note is that again a very similar um, sort of non-random pattern um, is emerging. Incidentally I've got the Felilex set at a frequency of 455 kilohertz for both of these uh, for the random and the edge of WGN noise. Um, but now what we need to do is answer the second question really which is um, they are definitely different noises but can we make use of them? Here's the HX108-2 uh, transistor radio kit, which I built um, in a previous set of videos. I'll put a link up the top there for you to refer to those, should you be interested. And what I'm going to do is feed in a, a signal, um, and we'll see if we can characterise the shape of the IF filtering that's going on. Uh, here's the circuit diagram of that radio, and the plan is to feed in the noise source um, at the collector of uh, transistor V1 there which is right at the start of the IF chain transistor V1 as well as being um, the first stage of RF amplification is also part of the oscillator circuit um, and then we've got transistors V2 and V3 uh, with their associated uh, variable uh, transformers that form the the IF stages and the plan is to take the signal from the collector of V4 now you'll see there that the V4 is actually got its collector connected to its base and effectively that's wired up as a diode and what it is essentially doing is working as, a, as an envelope detector to detect the AM signals and if you follow down from the emitter there C8 and R9 and probably C92 uh, form uh, a low pass filter to remove anything that's uh, that's left over from the uh, envelope detection and then the signal is taken from the wiper of the potentiometer into into uh, V5 which is the first AF stage but we want to keep um, purely the um, the sort of the RF or IF side if you like so hence connecting the probe to the the collector and base of V4 so that's before any kind of uh, detection has gone on Okay, let's start with the M0 BNM noise source then being fed into the HX108 and looking at the plot that comes out of the detector uh, we can see um, quite a, a random but very obvious um, uh, shape of the IF envelope and if I average down the readings there to, to an average of every 100 readings you can see there's the IF filter centered on about 465 kilohertz which is the IF frequency of this radio and so yeah M0 BNM noise uh, doing the job uh, rather nicely um, so that's okay let's now move on to the two types of noise from the Felilec first up then on the Felilec is the random noise and we'll switch on the uh, 
nice source and you can immediately see the shape of the IF there. We'll, in a moment or two we'll put the averaging in so that you can uh, see it a little more clearly. But one thing to note there is that uh, you can still see that sort of less than random noise um, that we saw earlier on um, coming from the feely lick. Uh, it clearly isn't completely random. However, in terms of producing a plot to allow us to characterise the IF the shape of the IF filters, it, it's perfectly acceptable and just does the job nicely. Okay, let's now move on to the um, AWGN noise source and see how that looks. And finally, let's look at the AWGN noise from the Feely Lick. And again, as you can see, it's got that obvious less than random uh, noise to the actual signal. However, it's more than um, capable of demonstrating the shape of the IF filtering. I've got 100 uh, averaging going on there on the view for you. Um, so all three noise sources are more than capable of doing the, the job in this case. Finally, just for completeness sake, uh, here's a plot using the tracking generator built into the spectrum analyzer. And I've also asked it to, to calculate the uh, width of the skirt at, at the 3 dB down point. And it's coming up with 13.6 kilohertz. And for a relatively low-fi transistor radio, that's probably pretty good. Um, but as you can see, the built-in tracking generator is producing a curve very similar to that produced by the, uh, the noise sources. Okay, to summarise then, I've essentially been trying to answer two questions. The first one was Barry Whitaker's question regarding the uh, noise that's produced by this analogue uh, board, the M0 BNM noise source, compared to the noise produced by the Felilec FY6900 signal generator. And the answer to that question, of course, is yeah, the noise is different, and hopefully you've seen that in the various displays. There's also, of course, on the Felilec, the um, AWGN noise source, which I believe stands for all wave Gaussian noise. And again, we've seen that is, again, subtly different to the, to the random noise available on the Felilec. And the supplementary question, the one that I was asking as a result of that is, even though the noise is different, is it nonetheless usable um, uh, for whatever it is you want to do with it? And in my case, that's aligning um, the intermediate frequency stages of uh, AM radios, which is something I, I do on occasion. And this is perfectly usable for that. Obviously, the uh, signal does drop away um, fairly quickly towards 10 megahertz, so it probably wouldn't be terribly good for aligning a, a 10.7 meg um, uh, IF uh, set, but certainly for the conventional 450, 460 kilohertz it's, it's perfectly acceptable for that, as is the Felilec um, uh, signal generator, whether you're using the random or the Gaussian noise. Uh, and the only difference with the Felilec is I've actually set it so that the centre frequency was uh, the same as the IF frequency. So this definitely produces random analog noise whereas there's a little bit less randomness involved with the with the feely lek however they're both useful so i hope that's made some sense and hopefully um, answered barry's question and just cleared a few things up for me which i've found quite useful and um, thanks very much for watching thumbs up if you've uh, liked it please that'd be great it'd be great if you could subscribe as well thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one